When working with modules, there are a few subtleties about UTOP that you need to be aware of. When you type use in UTOP, it's as if you were directly issuing the commands from that file into UTOP itself. So if I use stacks.ml, which had our list stack and my stack implementation, it's as if I had directly typed all of those into UTOP itself. Let's recall what those definitions were. We had a stack sig, we had a list stack impl, we had a list stack, we had two stacks, S1 and S2, and so forth. And you can see that those got defined here in UTOP, and I can use those exactly as normal. When I printed out this value S1 here, notice how it printed out that the value was abster, or what's, that's really short for abstract. It's in angle brackets. We've seen that before. Angle brackets means that OCaml has something unprintable. S1 is unprintable here because it is abstract. Remember, we made that representation type abstract in the stack signature, and we sealed list stack at that signature, which means values of that type, we don't even know what they are because we don't know what the type is externally from that module. So OCaml is able to tell us that it's a value of type list stack, but it's not able to tell me exactly what the value is. S2 is different. S2 was from list stack impl, which was never sealed. So it's able to print out exactly as that list because it's known to the external world what the representation type is, that it is a list. As we go into the future with programming assignments, we're more often going to be using OCaml build, which is what the make targets we ship to you in the release code actually use. And OCaml build is going to compile our code a little differently. It's not as if we just directly typed it in UTOP. Let's return to the stack compilation unit we created before to see this in action. Stack.ml has all the definitions for our stack implementation as a list, and I could use that in UTOP. That makes all those definitions available. But it's as if I had directly typed them. And so there's no notion that there's an interface provided for this code at all. In particular, the fact that the representation type is a list is totally exposed here. So what is empty? It's the empty list. We get to see that. Of course, the whole point of having a compilation unit, though, is that the interface can actually provide some encapsulation. So normally what will happen is we will build the compilation unit. Now, I had to type those commands directly to build the compilation unit. You don't usually have to type that because we provide a make file target that runs the appropriate OCaml build commands for you. But what that OCaml build command did was created some files in the build directory, in particular stack.cmi and stack.cmo. So stack.cmi is the compiled version of the MLI file. Stack.cmo is the compiled version of the module file, of the .ml file. Now that those exist in that directory, I can load them inside of Utah. First, I have to tell UTOP what directory I want it to load code from. By default, it will only look in the current directory. Of course, OCaml build puts all of its compiled files in underscore build, so I have to add that as a directory. Now I can load the compiled stack code. And the stack module is now available to me, but it has the name stack. So I can enter, enter stack.empty, and now that is an alpha stack, but it's abstract. The interface has been used to seal that module. And notice that I have to write stack.empty at this point. I can't just write empty anymore. It's not as if I had just typed these commands in, because I used load rather than use. Now, load is more complicated, as you can see here but it more closely mimics the way you would really use this code in the rest of a code base. If you were using the stack module in some other module of your code base, you would be writing stack dot. Uh, the stack values would be abstract there because the type would be abstract from being sealed by the interface. If you were going to do a lot of testing with the stack module and you found yourself having to re-enter these commands all the time, 
Well, there's a solution for that too. Put them in the .ocaml init file. Because all the commands in the .ocaml init file are run every time you launch UTOP, I now have the stack module available. And in the future, you'll see some of the programming assignments we ship to you will do just that. Finally, when you want to load code from a third-party library, not a module from your own code base, not a module from the standard library, there's yet another directive for that, which is require. I've now loaded the OUnit third-party library, and its definitions are now available.